I'm Colby Melton, an SDI student enrolled in FTH 212 striker fired pistols. Today's date is May the 11th, uh, 2024. My professor is Dr. Purdue, and this is my module three assignment. In front of me here, I have my um, PSA dagger compact. We'll go ahead and clear that. Orientated in a safe direction, drop the magazine. As you can see, the follower is clear. The magazine is empty. Lock the uh, slide to the rear. Uh, check the magazine well, nothing in there. Check the uh, chamber, uh, bore, it is clear. Uh, the firearm is clear. All right, we changed uh, camera angles, but the firearm is still clear. Um, slide locked to the rear. Uh, there's nothing in the chamber, the bore, or the magazine well. Uh, there's no live ammunition in the uh, workspace, and the magazine is also empty. Uh, so the first part of part one is to uh, field strip the weapon. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and let that go forward. Bring it back slightly. Push down on the, um, the tank downs. Pull the trigger. Pull it apart. Uh, so there we have our frame. Uh, remove the recoil, rod, um, the recoil assembly rod. Uh, the barrel. And then the slide. And the magazine. So number two for the lower portion, uh, the trigger that you pull uh, cycles the action, makes it fire. Uh, the ejector right here, uh, the little cruciform, and the lug that uh, gets pushed over by the slide to uh, help reset that. And uh, to where it pops up and catches the thing, the locking surfaces here for the barrel. And then the little, uh, on the trigger bar here, uh, this little portion that pushes up and it uh, deactivates the uh, internal drop safety. Uh, this recoil rod assembly, uh, it has the spring, the flat surfaces uh, of interest, uh, and it adds as a damper and then drives the, uh, as the action goes backwards and then add, acts as a drive rod assembly as it goes forward. Uh, you have the barrel, it's got a rim inside where the cartridge rests against, the feed ramp, uh, the little hood, uh, the little ramp here that helps it cam uh, back into place as it goes forward. Um, the little, uh, the muzzle or the crown here where the round exits and then the lands and grooves of the barrel. And here uh, on the slide assembly, uh, we have the uh, extractor, the uh, breech uh, lug that uh, strips and feeds the rounds, uh, the breech face where the uh, round comes against, uh, the drop safety with the, uh, Right there, as you push forward with this part right here, it allows the thing, uh, the striker assembly to go forward and the striker sticks through the face and you can hear the reset right there and it won't go forward if it's not there. Uh, your little area around here uh, that the barrel actually rides into and just uh, how it cams up as it goes from that ramp and falls in. You have your track, so your rail cuts and then your magazine, uh, which has your lips uh, your follower, the body, a spring inside, and then the base plate. Number three, identified. So all the points that I just pointed out on these is mainly the fangs. You also have a magazine rele uh, release. Uh, as you push, you want to make sure it goes over. Uh, the little lug back here uh, resets the, uh, the, pops up the shelf to catch the striker. And then you have your trigger reset, and this comes up as it goes forward. Your locking lugs, you want to inspect those, make sure they're good. Uh, no burrs, bends, damage, anything like that. Your trigger and trigger reset, um, it's kind of manual. There's not like some. Uh, no breaks or things. You were looking at the two surfaces and then the spring for no breaks. Uh, your lugs here on your, um, on your, um, on here, uh, how they set on top and then just how they fall in. And, um, for this, uh, your sights, as well as what I've said before, and just make sure they're not loose or anything. And then on this, it's your lips. Uh, you would want to measure these if uh, you've measured them before to make sure they haven't changed. Uh, demonstrating the operation for the instructor. Uh, this magazine fits in here, the catch, the grooves catch it. Uh, if it's not, um, if it's empty, it pushes up on the uh, slide stop assembly right there. Um, you pull the trigger, um, the, the cruciform comes back a little bit, um, which 
engages uh, this here, pulling it back, cocking it the rest of the way. And as it uh, is released, uh, the shelf drops and um, th this connector pushes up on the uh, deactivator, allowing the striker to go forward, uh, injecting the round. Um, as the round is um, sets in here and it is fired, uh, it goes off. And then as it starts to recoil, this rides slowly back with this, uh, this buffs it. And as once this, which sets up here, um, starts to come back, it catches in there. And then it cams up in here and comes back. And this is where the extractor has the round. It's, it starts to pull it back into the ejector. It hits the ejector and ejects out the, uh, the, the cut of the slide here. And then the uh, recoil rod as it comes all the way back, it um, the grooves um, engage the lug right here, and it uh, sets the, the shelf back over uh, to pop up to where it'll catch um, the, the uh, striker to cock, half cock it, and it'll come forward. The uh, breech lug right here will take the cartridge off the top of the magazine and uh, feed it up the feed ramp right here. Uh, for feeding and uh, chambering and then as it's in there uh, this comes forward and uh, it rides up the hood um, as the it comes forward and locks into place additionally uh, the surfaces on the actual slide uh, that we talked about earlier uh, where it sits on the shelf help it to all, all lock up uh, so it can be uh, fired again as the triggers reset it pushes the trigger forward, it resets as it pulled again, it'll have, uh, fully cock the striker the rest of the way, and everything just continues to uh, operate. Number four, our, I feel really comfortable uh, performing troubleshooting work uh, like this on this platform or Glock uh, or Glock clone type platforms up to Generation 3 uh, because of the build in this class and just working with it. I pretty much uh, become quite familiar with the components and the operation of them and the cycle of operation of the pistol. I equally feel, uh, if not more, uh, able to do this on a SIG uh, M17, M18, because I have over 800 of those I maintain at work. As far as like MMP, uh, Smith & Wesson MMPs and Springfields, I think I'd need an armors class or something to do this type of work on those platforms. Part two uh, is headspace. Part one is proper way to headspace. We have two headspace gauges here, go and a no-go. Uh, we're going to take the he uh, go gauge, put it in here. Uh, take the, uh, the slide and the, and the barrel. Uh, make sure it goes under this tractor and close it. Should close all the way. Hoods all the way up, ramps all the way up. It's locked into place. Everything's nice and parallel. So it passes the go gauge. Um, Next, we're going to take the no-go gauge, stick it in there, close it all the way, uh, push it all the way in, slide it under the extractor, and it should not close or there should be a difference. So now we have a gap. It doesn't go all the way up the ramp, and then the hood doesn't lock into place. Uh, so there is a visual difference. Uh, it won't close all the way, and uh, there's a gap. So it passes uh, the uh, head spacing. 2.2, the surface dimensions that dictate head space in the chamber. And compared to the other designs, uh, there's a, ri a ring inside here before the lands and groove start that ends the chamber. And uh, that's with the stopping points. So stopping points are where they're designed. Uh, for the this, the lip or the opening of the mouth where the bullet sits all the way to the base of the actual uh, backside of the uh, rimless rim is the uh, length of the uh, chamber. And that's how it's measured. It's from that stopping point to where the actual back uh, portion of the uh, or the base of the rim sits. Uh, for that's your nine millimeter for your 38 uh, it's off the rim because that's the stopping point where it fits in the chamber so it's the the thickness of the rim from the the front side of the rim to the very back side of the rim and then your stopping point for something like a bottleneck is the actual neck itself and uh, where it stops into the neck and then measures uh, that to the back of the actual the base so where the neck rest uh, stops it to the very back of the base and that uh, concludes this assignment.